Okay, so this is only the fifth time that I've tried this. Last time I got through it, it was perfect. It was probably the best one of these um, videos that I've ever made. It was amazing. I told the jokes at just the right point. It, it, it was a, it, it was just what you were looking for in one of these videos. Um, and it ran for 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, my uh, camera shuts off, and it, YouTube won't let me upload anything that runs that long. Even though I, I mean, I really just got to the end right at 20 minutes. It was just horrible. It was just horrible. That's exactly what I don't want to have happen now. Um, so this is for this um, second um, example that I didn't get done in class. Uh, if you look at the first example, that is that is so simple that I really don't want to waste time with the video. Uh, there's no way I can justify it. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to do the second one. Uh, it is, when you do it straight, um, really simple. I will go through it, you know, in our uh, normal sort of manner where we um, go through and I use basically the rubric to, to show you how to um, work the problem. Um, in this case, what we have is we have a um, non-uniform charge distribution, um, sigma of theta, which is sigma naught times cosine theta, on a um, spherical shell of radius r. Um, so that sort of looks like this. Got some sort of spherical shell. Um, we've got some direction theta equals zero. And we've got a lot of positive charge up at the top, a little less on the sides, and it goes all the way until it gets really, really, uh, it gets a lot of charge on the bottom like that, negative charge. So we've got some sort of um, spherical shell, just, the, just this um, surface here. There's nothing on the inside. There's no charge on the inside, just on the surface, which is a 3D surface, obviously. So, I mean, remember that it is 3D. Um, and what we'd like to do is we'd want to find we want we'd like to find the um, magnet or electric dipole moment, right? And that dipole moment um, is only meaningful when the total charge Q is equal to zero. So before we find the dipole moment, what I'm going to what we're going to do is we're going to confirm that this is zero. Um, there is a di there there can be a dipole moment for a charge distribution with q equals zero but it it will depend on your, your coordinate system all right and that's not really meaningful right that's what we want a really meaningful number and p is only independent of coordinates of the coordinate system if q is equal to zero okay um so the concept behind this is just the dipole moment it's not anything um, excessively complicated and the way we'll find it is with the equation I showed you in class that I didn't get, get a chance to actually use it's the integral over some surface in this case it's this closed surface um, of the position of the charge times the amount of charge that's actually there um, you know, integrated over this surface. Uh, that That's pretty much it. Notice this is going to be a vector quantity. This is a vector and we're going to integrate over it. Um, we do want to spend some time in the setup because we're doing some sort of integral. And while we're doing these integrals, it's very, very, very important to know exactly um, what's going on with all of the, uh, with all the coordinates, with all the vectors and so on. Um, because if we make just a little error, it can it can throw off something important. In this case, the easiest thing would be to screw up what that direction is if we're not really really careful. Um, so what we're going to do is because because you know this is only meaningful if this is zero, and when this is meaningful, we can move it around. It's easiest just to you know center our. Um, sphere right there at the origin. So that center 
goes here to the origin, right, in our um, Cartesian system. So we'll actually do the integral in the Cartesian system. Um, so that's going to look something like that. And what I've done is I've placed the sphere center um, I've placed that at, at the origin. And the other thing we want to do is to make sure that the heavy negative, or the heavy positive charge is there, and the heavy negative charge is there. Uh, so we s set theta equals zero at uh, the positive z direction. And um, that lets us use basically the normal sort of spherical coordinate system uh, that we'd use somewhere else possibly. Um, and it, of course we need to draw write a vector. So our, we want our vectors for uh, our one vector for any place on this spherical shell. Okay, that's the only vector that we really care about in this particular problem. Um, and that's going to be um, some distance r, the radius from the center. So r times um, basically the direction directly out of uh, this guy here, the radial direction. The radial direction is sine theta cosine phi in the x hat direction plus um, sine theta sine phi in the y hat direction plus cosine theta in the z hat direction. Right? Perfectly simple. We, are, we don't have any major problems at this point. Um, so our strategy will be directly, it will be direct, it will be straightforward, it will be integrate. Right? So one, we integrate to find the total charge. Um, and that'll be simple enough, right? I mean, it's th this is an all direct application, right? And in class, I would have just found P, I would have set this up, found P, and everything would have gone really, really quickly. Um, I have added the rest of this because, I mean, the whole point of these videos is to get you used to the problem-solving process, model that for you. Um, it's, unfortunately, it's unfortunate that that doesn't work very well in class, but it does work very well if you, um, if you watch a video like this and you, you know, Go forward, when, go forward when you know something, go back when you miss something, so forth and so on. Scan around, um, make sure you understand what I'm doing at each step. That will help you um, with this problem solving process. Uh, this is, again, mostly just set up, but you know, thinking about things in a logical manner before you actually start throwing numbers at them usually helps. Um, so you should just get into into that habit. So we need to integrate to find the dipole moment. So not a um, particularly complicated problem. Um, we've done a couple of complicated problems online here, but not that many. Um, so Q, total charge Q. That's going to be, we're going to have something similar to this, um, just without um, the x. So this would be like having x to the zero. So the, the, the charge is sort of a moment of the charge. It's the zeroth moment of the charge. Uh, the dipole moment is the first moment of the charge. The quadrupole moment would be the um, the uh, second moment. And that would be even more complicated because you'd have two directions. And we don't want to get into that. Um, actually, we do want to get into that. That's really cool. Uh, but we don't... But you know, we don't really have time to um, get into tensors and all the other fun things that I know you really, really want to do. I bet you hang out in the library all night reading um, books on tensor analysis because, you know, that's what everybody does. I mean, the only people who don't do that 
are the people who don't have access to a library with books with about tensor analysis. Okay, so when we integrate the charge, now we need we need to um, get our volume element correct. Our volume element is R squared sine theta um, d phi d theta, right? Or I guess that's our surface um, element right there. Uh, you can tell right away that this is a, um, it, we need this whole, uh, this whole thing, the R squared sine theta, um, just because you need the R squared multiplied by the sigma naught to get your um, Q. Uh, you also know that because you know the only the only one of these um, differentials that doesn't have anything doesn't have some constant associated with it or some other variables associated with it is the dr. Um, so we put all this together here. We have um, no phi dependence, so we have a two pi right, and then we have our sigma naught and we have our r squared. So that looks all right to me, to me so far. Um, then we integrate from zero to pi cosine theta, sine theta, d theta. Um, but I mean, if we look at this, we know that this is minus d cosine theta, right? So we could actually just do a really simple integral uh, with that. So, that. so if we make that substitution, we get minus two pi uh, we'll switch this to r squared sigma naught um, zero to pi cosine theta d cosine theta. If we do if we do this, this is just like x dx, right? Only with cosine thetas in it. So that's going to be one half cosine squared theta. Um, so. That means we end up with minus pi r squared theta times um, cosine squared theta evaluated at zero and pi. Cosine theta of zero is one, cos, cos, or the square of one is one. Cosine of pi is equal to minus one. The pi of minus one is one, so we have one minus one, which is zero, which confirms. what we were saying before, right? We said before the total charge has to be equal to zero for the dipole moment to make any sense. And obviously it's got to be equal to zero because we wanted to, because I wanted to show you the dipole moment. Um, but this is really the sort of thing that you should, uh, you should do is you should check things before you go, th go through um, and do a lot of math. Um, even if you have to check them with more math. Okay, so our dipole moment uh, is this very similar looking thing, obviously. I told you that before. Um, and I'll use that notation because I like it a lot. Um, and so now we have to take this guy and shove it in here, right? So let's start it all off to go over all of the angles on that surface. And then we multiply by the radius times all of these fun things, sine theta, cosine phi, x hat plus sine theta, sine phi of y hat, in the y hat direction, plus cosine theta, z hat, ooh, that was good. And then we have um, sigma naught cosine theta, and our differential element here, our area element, so r squared sine theta um, d phi d theta. Okay, so we're looking good. We're looking good. All right. So let's see, what can we pull out of there straight away? Well, we've got a sigma naught, and we have three, r, three r's, so it's sigma naught r cubed. Um, and we'll just not worry about doing the um, theta integral yet. First, we'll just do the phi integrals. So we'll break these things up. So uh, we have a sine theta times the integral from zero to two pi cosine phi d phi in the x hat direction plus um, 
sine theta. Well, we can put both of these in here. So we've got sine theta times the integral of 0 to 2 pi um, sine phi d phi in the y hat direction. Um, plus uh, cosine theta times the integral from 0 to 2 pi um, uh, d phi. So that's just the integral of 1. So nothing amazing. Uh, we got rid of that guy. We still have a cosine theta and a sine theta and a d theta. Now this guy is 0 and this guy is 0, so this whole bit here is 0. Uh, we only have this z hat direction left. Right? So the x and y components go away just like that because we're, we're integrating over one period of a um, sinusoidal function. This guy, uh, we, we get a 2 pi out in front. So we have this guy equal to um, 2 pi r cubed sigma naught in the z hat direction, right? And we have um, the integral of from 0 to pi of cosine squared theta sine theta d theta and we can use the exact same trick that we used before right so we end up with minus 2 pi r cubed sigma naught z hat integral from 0 to pi cosine squared theta d cosine theta all right so when we do this, uh, when we do this integral, we get one third cosine theta. So we have um, minus two pi over three r cubed sigma naught z hat. Lots and lots of things to put in there, right? Um, times whatever we got left over, which was the cosine cubed theta zero to pi, right? Um, and uh, cosine of 0 is 1, 1 cubed is 1, right? And cosine of pi is minus 1, minus 1 cubed is minus 1, so we have minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. So this whole thing is minus 2. That's minus 2. So we end up with um, 4 pi over 3 r cubed sigma naught in the z hat direction. And that is our answer. Just a little bit, a little low. Okay. So now, now you see it. Basically, what we end up with is uh, the volume uh, enclosed by the surface charge times the surface charge, and pointing in the z z direction. So our um, dipole moment looks like this. P. And you'll you will see this again, and you will you will drive it. Um, when we do the method of images, this actually is something that happens in would happen to a um, conductor a conducting sphere. Uh, very, very good. I think we've had a lot of fun, and I will talk to you uh, in class. All right, bye now.